Hey everyone, uh, Mr. Long Short here. I want to spend a little time talking about the difference between speculating and collecting. Um, when you're in this hobby, if you're doing one or the other, uh, it's relatively straightforward. The risk is is when you're doing both at the same time. Um, that is my approach to the hobby. I enjoy collecting uh, and I enjoy speculating. Um, but when those two intersect, uh, there's a few things you need to be aware of. Um, on the speculating side of things, you know, to be upfront, many of the books that I talk about um, are speculation plays that I may at some point uh, sell. Um, and, you know, one of the things that I often do, to be perfectly upfront, is, is when I identify a book and I think there's a fair value for it, if I, if I get two or three of them, I may post one on eBay for what I believe is the ultimate fair value, which would be something above what I paid for it. Um, I will say that I'm not very good at picking the upside of these things. More often than not, when I sell, you know, books double from there, um, but that's fine. Um, um, I understand what I'm buying for them and, and ultimately where, you know, I think that they can go. Um, and the market will take it from there. Um, so so when, you, when you're speculating, you're effectively looking for books that are undervalued that will increase in value. And they'll increase in value for a number of different things, but um, however you boil it down, right, there's going to increase the awareness um, of a book, um, a spike in demand for a book um, that'll push the price higher. There, there are lots of different ways to speculate in the market. Um, you know, I would say perhaps the most popular from what I've been able to gauge is people forecasting or anticipating characters are going to show up in major movies. Um, this seems to be the number one way people um, uh, make bets on, on books. That is not... Um, necessarily my favorite approach it's certainly an effective one um, but but that's not where I like to um, to come up with my uh, speculation ideas I, I prefer to look for areas of the market where there's already established demand for a character um, and then look for those books that maybe the market has forgotten about or overlooked whether it be newsstands um, ratio variants uh, and certainly late printings. Um, so that's always been um, my preference of speculating in the market. Um, there are others that can sort of piece storylines together and and come up with um, with characters that are going to become important in the future. Um, you know, that is not necessarily my strong suit, but there, but there are certainly some people out there that do that exceptionally well. When, when you are speculating, I think one thing to be aware of is, is that when you are right and a book really catches heat and it sees material price appreciation and we've seen some very big moves in the current market um, know when you want to get out of that book it, it one of the traps that you can fall into is that when a book gets really hot all of a sudden you have an attachment to it and, and that's fine but at least be honest about it um, at least be honest with yourself about it why you've you've changed your mind in, the, in that book right I would, I would caution anybody to, you know, move a book from the speculation category into the collection category just because it's hot. And, um, and it's hard, right? When, when, when you find a book that all of a sudden is taken off in price, it's, it's hard to let go of that. And I'm not saying that you have to, um, but, but just remember why you made that purchase to begin with. Um, you know, the other side of the equation is actually even trickier, right? So, um, you know, I think most of us in this, um, in this hobby are collectors first. Um, and when you collect, um, without question, you're going to have books that get really, really hot and, and maybe reach prices in the secondary market that you never anticipated. And, you know, you'll ask yourself a question, does it make sense to sell this book at this point in time? Um, you know, if it's a book that's near and dear to your heart, I would almost always recommend that you not sell it. Um, if, if it's part of your personal collection, just hang on to it. Um, you know, you'll look back, you, there's, there's a chance you could look back on that and just regret it regardless of the price you're able to, to sell it for. 
Um, that said, you know, sometimes books reach, you know, even sort of your wildest expectations, and it may make sense um, to part with those to reinvest in other books in your collection. But that that's really up to you. Um, but but be very careful about selling books that are that are near and dear to your heart. There are books in my collection that um, that I won't let go, um, and there are others that I might consider at at the right price. Um, uh, but I'm trying to be very very careful about 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 selling books that um, that I've been hunting for a long time that are that are cornerstones of of my PC. Um, but um, you know just just. Go into it with your eyes wide open. When you are speculating, know the price that you want to get out. When you're able to get out at that price, sell it, move on, reinvest in some other ideas. Um, within within your PC, um, if, if you end up having a book that that, that really hits the stratosphere, um, you know, be honest with yourself about whether or not you really want to let that, let that book go. I get asked a lot, what are some of the things the favorite books in my collection in my PC so I figured I'd touch on that if anybody cares feel free to tune out right now there's not a lot of speculation value in this in this next segment um, but I'll I'll touch on some of my favorite books and, um, and, and let you know what I like to collect um, so um, I've always been a big uh, Daredevil fan so I was out this weekend shopping and I, and I came across this book Nothing particularly spec worthy here. Um, it is a newsstand um, you, um, from yeah, it was June of two thousand. Uh, they they were harder to come by at that point in time. Um, I'm a big big Daredevil fan. Um, particularly like um, Echo. Forgot how much I like this character. To be perfectly honest, um, when I started getting back into the hobby, um, this Daredevil run was one of the first ones that I picked up. Uh, so I've really enjoyed um, digging into that. So um, I, I do like newsstands. Um, you know, one of my favorite books is this one. Um, you know, I hunted for this book for, for a very, very, very long time. I got super lucky getting this, uh, super lucky. I won that, um, it wasn't graded. I won it raw in an auction for about $230 and, um, which, um, was, you know, half the price that I'd been sort of considering I'd be willing to spend for that. Um, I almost never get that lucky in auctions, but um, the kicker on that one was is that it wasn't that wasn't even the only book in the auction. There was another um, relatively scarce book as well. So, um, um, you know, every once in a while these things break your way. Ji Hung Lee, I'm a big fan of his of his work. Um, I try to collect everything that all the covers that he does. I don't know why it just speaks to me. You know, there's a few other ones that you can see here. So, um, you know, I've got, you know, most of his covers. Um, and um, so, um, you know, those are prized pieces of my collection, things that I'm, I'm not going to let go. Um, you know, I also like, you know, Miracle Man quite a bit. Um, picked this one up raw and was fortunate for it to come back um, a 9-8. I probably got it for less than ten dollars, but um, you know, this story is—if you haven't read it, run out and read it. It's phenomenal. Um, for me, Alan Moore's best work, and I know that's saying quite a bit, given you know, given his resume. But but my favorite stuff here. Um, I think there may be some spec value behind Miracle Man, as, as some of you may or may not know. Marvel acquired the rights. Uh, to the character, so they own it. They reprinted a bunch of, of, of his, um, they reprinted the entire run. Um, Donny Cates has said that's a bucket list project for him to write Miracle Man one day. He would drop everything to write Miracle Man. Um, my guess is that um, Marvel's well aware of that, and they're going to give him a shot at a limited series there at some point. Um, so, um, you know, Miracle Man could see a resurgence down the road. Nobody nobody's specking on Miracle Man right now, so you can go out and pick up those books for, for next to nothing. Um, I've got no inside scoop there. I've just read what, what Donnie has said and how important that character is to him. So I think there's a pretty good chance down the road um, that he gets involved in that. Um, some of the things, you know, I, 
as most of you probably well aware, I'm not um, the biggest DC reader. Um, um, but I will say, for whatever reason, um, Punchline has really appealed to me. And I'm not sure why. I mean, there was a lot of negativity around the character when, when she broke, uh, particularly around Hellraiser 3. Um, a lot of animosity, and uh, I don't know. I think that's maybe why I was drawn to it. Like, why is that? Why is this upsetting people so much? And uh, James Tynion's run has been um, with her has been phenomenal. I don't miss it, and really, really enjoying what she's brought to DC. And I've started reading DC again specifically for that for that reason. Um, I've talked about this book before, but I, I think this this cover B variant for Hellraiser Risen Three is is something to um, is something to think about. Uh, you know, Hell Arisen 3, by all accounts, had a print run in the neighborhood of 35,000, from what I've been able to find. Cover Bs, these cardstock covers, um, were being ordered roughly about 20% of the total um, um, when, um, when these were coming out. So, you know, that's just a ballpark number. But that puts, um, you know, this cover probably around you know, somewhere between six and 7,000, let's say, um, which makes it a relatively rare book uh, for Punchline. I, I, I can see these um, starting to, to evaporate in the market and, and get gobbled up. There's far fewer of them on um, the CGC census. So, and you know, I picked up these for cheaper than the cover A's uh, on eBay. So something to keep an eye open, something to think about, um, you know, I think this book is really underappreciated as well. This is the Batman 92, uh, 1 in 25 um, retail incentive variant. I'm a big fan of this cover as well. So I was talking online with Larry Doherty. I'm not sure if any if you guys know him, but he Larry Larry's comics, but he's he's a legend of the industry. But he was saying that Jim Lee had come out and said that um, uh, the Three Jokers number one was the largest ordered book of the year at 300,000. And what's interesting there is, is that implies we hadn't, we haven't seen a print run on Batman 92. It was definitely large as everybody wanted that art germ cover um, of Punchline. Um, I speculated that it was somewhere between 250 and 300,000, which was just a guess. Um, I started to wonder, well, could it have been a half million? Um, which apparently it wasn't. So anyways, I think it is going to come around in around that 250,000 to three, 300,000, which means that, you know, of that one in 25 variant, there are, or there should be a thousand to 1200 uh, to 12,000 out there, which is, which is small for, for a character like Punchline. So I think that book has a lot of legs. And if I'm being perfectly honest about appearances, that's the key appearance for her. I mean, she shows up in um, Batman 89. Um, she's got a couple panels in Hell Arisen 3, which has been dubbed her first appearance, and everybody's sort of crest on that one, her first appearance. But I think if you look at sort of the history of comics, Batman 92 is really a true first appearance. Um, I am very much of the mindset now that you have to own sets in order to get a first appearance. So it's Batman 89, Hell Arisen 3 and Batman 92. I think you need all three of those if you really will sort of want to capture Punchline's emergence into comics. Um, but I, but that, but that one in 25 variant, um, I think has a lot of legs. And, you know, I think one thing we need to understand is when that book got into retailers hands, a lot of LCSs were still closed. So you, they were all dumping them online all at the same time, uh, which put a massive amount of supply in a short period of time into the market. And, you know, they're probably selling in the, in the 50 to $60 range. Um, and because there were so many of them, you weren't seeing a price appreciation as those have become absorbed. And I think as people appreciate the scarcity of that book, um, I, I expect that to have um, some really nice upside. Uh, the other one that I like, and I had to do some digging here, this is Batman 92, the San Diego Comic-Con foil variant. Um, I would actually go out and, and snatch this one up if you don't have it. I tried to figure out what the print run on that is, and I've got no official word, um, but a number of trusted industry insiders think 3,000 is the right number. Like a, a couple think it could be 6,000. 
but not likely more than that. There aren't a ton of them online. Um, so that number feels right to me. Um, but I think if, if, if you do like punchline, um, that might be a good one to drive out, uh, run out and pick up. Um, you know, I think they're going for, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of $40. And, um, I think that, that, that seems like a fair price. Um, I, I think when they were selling them at the Comic-Con, they're going for right around there as well. So I don't think you're paying a premium there, but I, I, I think if those do get gobbled up and, um, and they disappear from the market that you know price appreciation could be could be fairly aggressive there so i'd run out and grab one um if you if you like the character um you know punchline is getting her own one shot a uh, tiny has come out and says that he's got big plans for the character uh so i, I think she's got legs and there and there's something particularly um appealing about punchline and I, and, and and sort of tie this all up i'm actually not speculating on punchline um um, that's very much in my PC for this for, for that character. Um, um, I, I don't know why, but I just I, I, I have been drawn to her and just um, the way that she's been written. Um, so those are all are all sitting comfortably in my PC. Um, so I guess I'll leave it there. Uh, thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know and we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks a lot.